Sorry about that, man. All right. Uh, I think that this is a pretty easy topic to vote pro on in the first and the first reason, because it's ethically an obligation that we have to vote to prevent suicide. It is a huge problem in America. It's actually on the rise. Uh, the rate of suicide between 2000 and 2013, uh, the annual rate of suicide, that is, climbed from 10.4 to 12.6 per 100,000 Americans. And those are just the suicides that coroners or government officials know about. Uh, no one knows how many hundreds or even thousands more people purposely overdose on drugs or deliberately drive their cars into trees or take their lives in other ways that cannot be positively confirmed as suicide. Um, and this indicates a larger problem, uh, which is uh, mental health problems that are not being dealt with in America. Uh, the number one reason that we should uh, that we should affirm this resolution is because uh, in America, we have so many mental health untreated and a lot of those people are ending up going to jail or ending up homeless uh, a large proportion of the homeless population has mental health issues and they're not being dealt with adequately there's a lack of community mental health centers there's no coverage for people in these income strata and uh, on a more personal note uh, about four years ago my best friend committed suicide and uh, I was unfortunate enough to be the one who found him uh, three days after the fact and this is a guy who had everything going for him. He had uh, he was about to get his degree in electrical engineering. He was a brilliant guy. Everybody thought that he was going to do great things with his life. And nobody had any idea that he had these problems going on, uh, least of all his friends. And uh, it's it's something that can't be dealt with outside of the realm of mental health care. Uh, there are some people that you just don't want to talk to. And oddly enough, sometimes it is your friends and family that you don't want to talk to. So uh, I think that a unique benefit of declaring a national epidemic for suicide would be that we can start to fund and critically examine and also quantitatively examine by scientific means and through government funding what is causing the suicide problem and how we can deal with it. It's a terrible thing for one suicide to happen. It's an atrocious thing for more than 40,000 people to take their lives in this country. And those are just the suicides that we know about. And on another personal note, which is very ironic because I chose this topic on Sunday, on Monday morning, I found a person who had hung himself by a tree on a creek here in the town that I live in, Evanston, Wyoming. You can look it up in the Uinta County Herald. Uh, I found him at about 11 o'clock on Monday morning. And uh, the, the fact that I have to deal with this personally it uh, doesn't even touch the fact that I personally have been hospitalized for having suicidal ideation because I have depression and it went untreated for years. And just the fact that I'm on antidepressants now is enough to pull that out. Okay. So first of all, I want to stress that by, by having this con approach, I am in no way saying that we do not need solutions to suicide. I don't want anyone to feel like that that is what I'm arguing for. And so my heart goes out to anyone that is dealing with suicide and especially to you for having dealt personally with other suicides and depression. I don't want to take away from that at all. Now, getting into this debate, it's key word of calling it a national epidemic. The reason you should vote con is that the suicide rates that we're seeing, and there is an increase, but the increase that we're seeing does not meet that of the definition of an epidemic. Now, let's look into defining a national epidemic because the CDC has definitions of what it quantifies as a national epidemic. Now, if we're looking at CDC definitions, um, I'm looking at the principle, um, um, section 11, epidemic disease occurrence. Um, this article basically talks about how they measure and quantify what is an epidemic. Now, this article mainly defines an epidemic as um, occurring suddenly in numbers clearly in excess of normal expectancy. This term is used especially for infectious diseases, but is also applied to any disease, injury, or other health-related occurring such outbreaks. So meaning it could be defined, like suicide could fit in that bracket given a certain circumstance, but we're not seeing that. Um, the, the key word there meaning sudden outbreaks. So what we're seeing right now is a slow and steady increase. The statistic that my opponent has brought up is, um, and one that I have 
have that is very similar is that in 2006, the average was about 10.97 suicides per 100,000. Now let's look at 2015 where we're seeing 13.26 per 100,000. Now that is an increase and one suicide is too many, but this does not fit the definition of a sudden outbreak. What you would have to see for this to meet that definition is us seeing an absolute skyrocket within the past month or even the past year for it to be instantly declared as a national epidemic. I agree that there needs to be solutions. I agree that there could be government intervention. I do not see how classifying as a ap national epidemic will bring success. And I also do not see how it fits the definition at all because by the definition from the CDC, it does not fit that definition. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate my opponent's uh, attention to detail on the definition of what the CDC considers to be a, an epidemic. But uh, I think that the ethical implications of what suicide means would allow us to bend the rules on that definition a little bit. And there's no reason why this couldn't be an act of Congress or something like that. And they can easily instruct the CDC to follow legislative action that declares a certain thing to be an epidemic. It's the same thing as saying that anything is an epidemic in this country or that we're going to have a war on poverty or a war on terror. You know, we can have a Wars on ideologies or wars on certain concepts, there's no reason we can't declare a certain concept to be an epidemic to enable us to better understand that and also to better combat it by directing the CDC and other related organizations to fund efforts to research the causes of suicide more in depth and also to be able to treat it and to set up mental health centers or provide funding for such things in the way that has been completely ignored as of now. Uh, and the fact that there's no way to deal with the uh, people in the cities that are homeless, that a uh, large majority of them are dealing with one or two or more mental health conditions that are going untreated that are essentially the reason why these people are homeless and can't get a job and can't live a, what you and I would consider a normal life. And they just can't afford to do anything about it because there's no insurance, there's no public coverage, uh, there's no community mental health centers, and the ones that do exist are crowded as heck, and there's no way for people to even get in there. And so there's a huge issue here. There's a huge gap in the way that we're dealing with what's known to be mental health problems, not only among the homeless, but among the American population at large. And uh, suicide is just a symptom of this larger problem. I mean, not everybody who's depressed becomes suicidal. Not everybody who has anxiety or has an, uh, schizophrenia or anything like that is suicidal, but they're dealing with serious problems. And suicide is just one symptom of an underlying problem, which is a mental health epidemic of epic proportions. And if you're going to make the argument that there needs to be a vast sudden increase, well, it's already there, man. It's like we're identifying new things all the time, new diagnoses like in the DSM-5 that are, that are better that we need to apply immediately, but there's no way for people to even get treatment for the conditions that they have. And that's how I end up finding some poor fucker stuck in a tree, uh, you know, and I, you know, I'm just a guy walking down a dirt path. This isn't the way that things should be going in this country. And this isn't the th something that friends and family should have to deal with. And honestly, I just think it would be heartless not to do some sort of action to take care of this problem. And if the most immediate expedient is to declare it to be an epidemic, whether or not it meets some immediate definition, we have a moral imperative to take care of this issue as it is increasing right now. I think my opponent has framed this debate around um, an epidemic would bring a solution to increased funding and increased solutions. Now, the burden of proof is really going to rely on him of showing how an epi calling it a national epidemic would uniquely solve this problem as opposed to other solutions, like just asking acts of Congress for increased funding. There is you could do that without calling it a national epidemic and without muddying the waters around a CDC definition that is prescribed for huge disease outbreaks that they need to address in an emergency situation like um, huge diseases. We haven't had a lot of disease outbreaks in America right now, thanks, thanks to vaccines and things like that. But that is what this definition is reserved for. I think that it is fair to properly diagnose suicide as a huge problem that definitely needs increased funding, that definitely needs solutions. But the burden of proof is really going to hammer in on him of showing how declaring it a, a national epidemic would uniquely solve this issue. Now, homeless people are 
do definitely deal with mental illness, but um, a huge majority of suicides are committed by white middle class males. That is usually the majority of suicides. And I think it's terribly sad. And I'm, I think that's horrible. And we do have a mental health health illness. But what I'm thinking my opponent is gearing towards is mental health as a whole could be considered as a national epidemic, not necessarily suicide. Suicide only kills about 44,000 people a year, which one is too many. I'm not arguing that this is not horrible. Please don't consider that. But we see 300,000 deaths a year or over that due to obesity. We're not calling that an epidemic. We're, we see deaths to things all around, but we're not calling them epidemics because they don't fit the definition of instant skyrocket and massive bursts of the, the outbreak in, that is disproportionate to the population. And so since it doesn't meet the definition of an epidemic, that doesn't mean it's not horrible. That doesn't mean that it doesn't need addressing or there shouldn't be solutions. But it should not be declared as a national epidemic because it doesn't meet the standards that the government of the U.S. has set in place. Okay, so uh, my opponent has said that it's my burden of proof to prove that declaring something an epidemic or a national emergency or anything like that is going to somehow provoke action. Well, not only do I think that it's common sense to do this, but I'll quote, quote from a Vox article from October 25th of this year, uh, which was, which, oh, sorry, October 23rd of this year, uh, what declaring a national emergency over the opioid epidemic could actually do. A declaration could potentially unlock some support to address the crisis, including a bit of funding and special regulatory waivers that could bolster prevention programs, as well as ac access to addiction treatment and opioid overdose antidote naloxone. So that's just a specific example of how declaring something an emergency, even though it's just the president deciding to do something not based on any CDC definition, could do something. And that's that's why we use those sorts of procedures, not only in the executive branch and the presidency, but the legislature. Uh, that's why they have the ability to declare things as being national priorities, just like Lyndon Johnson declared the war on poverty. Um, obviously, it's not that poverty hadn't been around for a long time and that all of a sudden there was drastically more poverty than there was before. You know, it was obvious that it's a problem. It's a longstanding problem. And there's something that needs to be done to uh, to deal with it. And, you know, the fact that uh, the only thing that you have is this definition to cling to and that you can't actually provide any sort of an alternative to deal with a long standing problem that perhaps hasn't been dealt with up until this point would seem to indicate that the burden of proof is on you to indicate that there's a better way to deal with this problem, um, especially considering the fact that the president and Congress have supervision over the CDC. They can tell them whatever is an epidemic. So, you know, clinging to one agency's regulatory definition of what they can do does not limit the fact that they can step outside of that rule when ordered to do so from above. Uh, and also the fact that uh, we have individual responsibility to recognize that uh, this is an epidemic. Uh, this deals with the fact that you pointed out that we're not calling obesity an epidemic. Well, plenty of people are, and I consider it an epidemic. And I think that it is an atrocious problem in America because it leads to heart disease and has all sorts of health effects, not to mention mental health effects. And these are all interlocking problems that are related to the fact that people don't have education and they don't have access to health care. They don't have health care education. They don't have health care access because they don't have coverage under the current system. And I'm not going to propose a system that covers that, but we at least need to get some sort of foundational framework going on this. And if we at least declared one of these huge atrocious problems to be a national epidemic, well, then that gives us access to being able to deal with it on a more concrete level. Uh, and once again, I've got to emphasize the fact that the moral imperative is going to outweigh every sort of definitional controversy here. Like, we have to do this to deal with the problem. There's no way to ignore it. What else are you proposing? So, um, I, I don't want to misunderstand my arguments. I wasn't saying that um, a national epidemic wasn't a solution. I said that there's nothing that that a national epidemic uniquely does that we couldn't take other measures to. So you could declare a war on suicide without calling it an epidemic, without having the CDC declare it as an epidemic, we could still increase funding. We could still pose all of the solutions that you're arguing for. I'm not disagreeing with the solutions that you're arguing for. Again, I, I really think that it is important to stick to the terminology and things like that. I think when we start bending definitions, we're going to start bending more things. And I'm not giving a slippery slope at all, but I'm saying that if we allow the CDC, the 
the groups that medically classify things. I don't think I really want Donald Trump going to the CDC and going, I don't care what you define as this. I want to define it as this. I think that's a, a dan- uh, not, not the fairest thing. I think that we should definitely let the CDC go, okay, this is what we have defined it as. And that's globally what it is defined as through numerous medical areas. It is a u- pretty much a universal term for a medical epidemic. And so since suicide rates have only increased about three per 100,000 within the past 10 years, I think that that's not a drastic enough thing to classify it as an epidemic, but it is definitely a problem. Now, we definitely need to see some solutions to this problem. I, I'm personally a college RA, and we have we have to go, uh, the, the state and the federal government has mandated that we go through a lot of suicide prevention training and things like that, of, of intervening in these cases. And I, I work with plenty of RAs that because of this these, these federal training mandates and stuff, we have been able to prevent and be successful in a lot of ways. Now, they did this without calling it an epidemic. We had these solutions and we've saved countless lives at our university, but we never once called it an epidemic. I don't see how calling it this term is suddenly going to change the frame when we can definitely push for the same solutions and push for the same things that you want, not disagreeing with those things that you want. I just think that this term, you have to prove to me in some way to change my mind on this, that calling it a national epidemic presents a entirely unique solution. I don't see any way that we can't have these same solutions that you want without calling it an epidemic. I think we can absolutely have these things without calling it the, the term that is listed in the debate. Okay, so um, once again, we're back to the definitional issue here. And, uh, you know, I do agree with my opponent that I would prefer not to have Donald Trump telling the CDC what to do. But, you know, if he was telling them to do this, then that would probably be the golden standard of his presidency and the pinnacle of all of his achievements, uh, which to date seem uh, somewhat lacking in my perspective. Uh, So I think that if he did something like this, Maybe some people would look askance at it, but everybody would probably applaud him. And I don't think that they would bat an eye if Congress did the exact same thing. So you're clinging to this one definition by the CDC, which is over limiting, and you're ignoring the fact that there is a moral imperative to deal with this problem. And your solution of a concrete, uh, a concrete way that we can deal with this is the federal training mandate that you use as an RA at your university. Well, clearly, since 40,000 plus people a year, and that doesn't count the unreported suicide rate or the ones that we just don't know, uh, that, that rate per year is not being dealt with adequately under that federal training mandate. And once again, you haven't addressed the fact that there's a complete lack of coverage for people. There are no community mental health centers, and the ones that do exist are stuffed to the gills with people who don't have enough money to afford treatment. And there's no other way to access this than by treating it as an epidemic. It's the same. And, you know, the fact that you point out that it hasn't expanded as fast as, say, having a cholera outbreak or something like that. Well, we haven't had an epidemic that meets your criteria in basically the entire history of the United States since the epidemics that destroyed the Native Americans when the Europeans first came here. There has not been an epidemic that has met your standards since the start of the United States. There have been outbreaks in certain localized areas, but your standard doesn't even allow us to declare anything an epidemic. So it's over limiting and it ignores the moral imperative of this issue. And really, I don't think that you're going to be able to get out of the fact that there is no better way to deal with it than make it a public issue, make it a public health crisis and eliminate the stigma around talking about this. Like, don't just dismiss it with a wave of a hand, but make it the word on everybody's lips. Make every American have to speak about the fact that suicide is a serious problem and that the things that are leading to suicide should be dealt with. And then we can at least have that conversation. And hopefully we can do it with scientific evidence that would be funded by declaring something like this an epidemic. When you do so, the CDC steps in and they start allocating resources and they start researching solutions and other organizations could get funding to do so. So I don't understand why that wouldn't be an easy solution to this problem. So. Um, I, you're saying I'm ignoring the moral mandate, and I don't think I am. I don't think that that I am saying that we should not have the CDC step in. The CDC stepped in plenty of times. That's why they exist, and there haven't been outbreak and there have been outbreaks, and there haven't been um, 
uh, epidemics, like you are saying. It's not my definition. It is the government's definition. It is it is what the government has defined as an epidemic. Now, we can absolutely call this an outbreak, and we can absolutely say that this is an important thing that we need to address. We can absolutely allocate resources, and that is important. This mental health crisis is very, very important and very close to my heart and things like that. And I definitely agree that there need to be solutions. Not trying to disagree with you on that. And I hope I hope you never misconstrue me as not caring or missing a moral mandate because I absolutely see this as a critical issue. My my main thing with this is if you want to reform the definition of an epidemic, that's fine. We can talk about reforming the definition. But as the definition stands, as it stands, Suicide does not statistically fit the definition, and that is a fact, and you cannot circumvent around that fact. You can talk about wanting to bend the definition, but as it stands currently, we've only seen three per 100,000 increase over 10 years. That is not a large, significant increase within recent years that demands it being called an epidemic. It demands addressing because 44,000 is far too many. I agree, but it does not fit this definition. So it should not be declared an ep a ep national epidemic because that is what the topic is talking about. It's saying, should we declare it an epidemic? No, we should declare it a problem and we should work on it. We should declare a war on suicide. We should fix these solutions. But my opponent has not presented how declaring an epidemic is unique because the CDC can still allocate these resources and help people out. The government can still allocate funding. The Congress can still vote for it. We can still push for it. That does not change anything. Anything. My opponent's proposition of national epidemic does not present any unique solution to this issue. It just throws another word into the mix that's calling it another word. Now, if if he wants to bend the definition, we can talk about having the CDC reform its definition first, and then we got to go to the suicide. But as the definition stands, talking about it right now, it does not fit this. The, the numbers do not line up for it being called a national epidemic. And that's just the fact of the matter. Okay. You know, I don't want to talk about definitions here, but look, I've already talked about the fact that your definition is over limiting in the extreme. And there's no reason that we can't, first of all, as common Americans accept it as an epidemic in the same way that we accept obesity as an epidemic, which I've mentioned before, but also the fact that there are multiple definitions of what an epidemic is, and we don't have to rely on one from a single agency in the government to govern everything that we consider in this area. Um, you've given no reason to prefer the CDC's definition. You've just uh, repeated the fact that we don't meet it. Well, fine, we can concede that we don't meet it, but I'm telling you, dude, it's over-limiting. And we can look at Merriam-Webster for multiple definitions of epidemic. First, affecting or tending to affect a disproportionately large number of individuals within a population, community, or region at the same time. Two, excessively prevalent. Three, characterized by very widespread growth or extent of relating to or constituting an epidemic. So um, the second and third uh, definitions there would seem to indicate that something can be existent in a population long before uh, it's an epidemic or declared an epidemic. In a lot of cases, something can be there for a long time and we just recognize the fact that we need to deal with it all of a sudden, uh, like the AIDS crisis. Uh, we, didn't, we, we didn't know what it was at first. And then when it became public knowledge, then all of a sudden it, matters started going the right way and we started having more public awareness of this. And that's one point that I have to emphasize is that it's not just about the fact that declaring it an epidemic would allow us to allocate resources and better study it, but it would also give us the ability to have public dialogue about it. And my opponent hasn't addressed that either. Um, not to mention the fact that, once again, there's still a moral imperative to deal with this problem, and he hasn't offered a concrete solution other than that the CDC could allocate funds to this, even though he admits himself that the definition that the CDC uses of an epidemic wouldn't allow them to declare this an epidemic. So that seems to be a little bit of a contradiction in terms to me. Uh, I, I would challenge my opponent to provide a definition that does allow us to deal with this problem uh, through the CDC or through any other agency and that does not simply ignore the problem and leave the circumstances the way that they are right now. 
Okay, so the CDC can absolutely allocate funds and, and do things to that respect without calling it an epidemic. The Ebola outbreak where we saw a couple of cases, the CDC hopped on that, and it, but it wasn't an epidemic because it didn't meet that standard, so they didn't call it that, but they were still able to address the issue. The, the CDC is not limited to, okay, we got to wait in this corner until they call it an epidemic. Okay, now they called it, we can go. But, but they can absolutely do things. They are not chained to the wall of we have to wait until it to this level before we help out, they can help out now and they should help out now. I absolutely think they should. And I think, I think my opponent can agree with me that they need to step in right now and start helping out. Um, for Marion Webster, I'm on, I'm on your link for your definition of affecting or tending to affect a disproportionately large number of individuals within a population. Uh, 13 and 100,000 would not really be a disproportionately large amount of the population. Um, excessively, I'll pass it. I'll pass it for you for a second. Three definitions there. I'd like you to address all of them if you don't mind. Oh, I absolutely will. I was I was moving down the ladder for you. Um, so excessively prevalent. Well, um, we see it, but it's forty four thousand out of three hundred million. It's prevalent. It's there, but excessively statistically, it is not. And don't don't please don't ever take this as me um, not addressing suicide as is an issue. It absolutely is, but we have to be critical of the terms we're using. Characterized by very widespread growth or extent. We are not seeing widespread growth. A move from 10 to 13 and 100,000 over 10 years is not widespread growth. It statistically is not. It is a problem. It needs addressing, but it is not statistically widespread growth. Now, um, constituting an epidemic, um, so these these definitions, even using your definitions, the suicide statistically does not fit in with that. And that does not mean that we do not need to address these issues. That does not mean that we do not need to solve these problems. That doesn't mean that they're not huge problems because one death is too many. One suicide is far too many. But we have to be critical of the terms we're using. It's like when a doctor diagnoses a disease, he makes sure that he's using the right terminology so that we can get the right prescriptions. If we call it an epidemic, we might possibly overreact and act rashly. If we take it calmly and we, we address this issue, my opponent has not presented a very concrete step-by-step -step solution either. We've talked about how we agree about the same solutions need to be enacted. My difference is that I don't think that an epidemic calling it an epidemic creates a whole new realm of solutions that we wouldn't be able to address beforehand. So the reason that I think that, that you should vote con on this one is because the, the definitions and the facts of the matter of an epidemic do not meet with the statistic numbers of suicide. They simply don't. So we shouldn't declare it a national epidemic because it doesn't meet the standard. If it doesn't meet that standard, that litmus test, we cannot call it that. We can call it a problem and we can absolutely address the resources to solve it. I am not arguing that. But the de this is a very much an argument of definitions. So I'll pass it back to you. Uh, I'd like you to respond to the fact that there's no way to declare anything an epidemic under your definition and nothing that has happened in America ever has been declared an epidemic. OK, just because we haven't had one doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. We could absolutely see a increase of the flu breaking out in random numbers that we haven't seen before, like say like people stop vaccinating their kids and like we had a polio outbreak that was nationwide. You could absolutely meet this standard. Don't you know, just because the CDC wouldn't set a standard that couldn't be met. It's just that America has a great system where we have been able to contain things to where they don't get to the proportions of an epidemic. Okay, well, uh, the fact that they're not being allocated that way right now and the fact that there is no alternative proposal also makes me raise certain questions. Uh, one thing I was wondering about is the fact that uh, you cut off the last part of that definition of epidemic on Merriam Webster. I would invite our viewers and judges to look at that. Uh, he said it's characterized by very widespread growth. The, uh, the definition actually goes on to say or extent. And in this case, it is widespread extent, and we have a moral imperative to deal with that. Uh, I think that that surpasses any sort of definitional accuracy that my opponent could claim, and I urge you to vote pro for that. So the or extent doesn't – I 
A, it wasn't intentional, but B, I don't think that changes drastically this definition. The reason that I think you should vote con in this instance is not because suicide isn't a problem. It's not because we shouldn't address it. It's not because we shouldn't allocate funds. We absolutely should. This is an issue that needs addressing. Absolutely. The crux of my argument is that Pro has not laid out a case of why epidemic presents a unique solution and why the CDC or the government could not allocate these funds and these solutions without calling it an epidemic. Epidemic does not present a unique solution to this issue. Therefore, why should we call it that if it doesn't meet the definition statistically of an epidemic? 44,000 people a year out of 330 some million people. It's a problem. I'm not taking away from that, but it does not meet that definition. And so because it does not meet that through statistics and actual facts, we cannot vote pro on this issue. And so I really hope that we can in the future bring together resources.